Hello, welcome to EHEP Indonesia 2020 Goes Online. This is Study in Europe webinar series. My name is Alicia. I will be moderating this webinar series. This webinar is going to be presented by Mr. Christian Rabel, Special Lecturer from DAAD Regional Office, Jakarta. Please stay tuned until the end of the webinar because we will hold a Q&A session. If you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to the country's higher education, you can submit your questions in the YouTube comment section anytime throughout the presentation. And now, please welcome Mr. Christian. Selamat sore. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Um, as the moderator said, my name is Christian Rabel. I am representing the German Academic Exchange Service, the DID, today. And I'm going to talk about study opportunities in Germany and also talk a bit about scholarships that the DAD offers. Um, thanks for being here and thank you for attention. Um, I'll give you a brief overview uh, about the study system in Germany, about the universities and where to find more information. Next slide, please. So these are clearly photos from a uh, better time from uh, before the pandemic. As you can see here, um, uh, beautiful nature also in Germany, in the eastern part, but also in the north. So it's, uh, studying in Germany is not only about having a good degree about top class um, higher education, it is also a great place to, uh, for your free time, a great place to travel and to make friends. Um, we are going to talk about facts today, though. Next slide, please. So I'm going to tell give you a bit of information, basic information about Germany. I will then talk about the German university system, what are the differences to the Indonesian system. I will also give you some practical advice for studying in Germany, uh, point out some sources on information, and then briefly present some DID scholarships and give you our contacts. Next slide, please. As you may be well aware, Germany is located in the heart of Europe. It has currently a population of 83 million, so which is less than a third, actually, of Indonesia today. Um, the biggest cities are Berlin, which is the capital, followed by Hamburg, Munich, Cologne, and Frankfurt. Uh, the climate is, of course, quite different from the Indonesian climate. It's temperate. In the beginning, it's rather chilly, though. Winter is coming. Next slide. Yes, a lot of inventions have been made in, in Germany, also this rather old mobile here. The automobile was invented by Karl Benz already in the 19th century, but there are also uh, younger innovations such as, next slide please, the MP3 uh, audio format, which may be uh, lesser known, that it was also invented by uh, Karl-Heinz Brandenburg at the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. So um, these innovations, um, have also been facilitated by the industry in Germany. And uh, next slide, please. Um, and there are many German corporations that are well known by all over the world. Um, many of these companies that you see here, especially from the autom automotive industry, textile industry, but also pharmaceutical and technical industry, are also represented in Indonesia with branch offices or production facilities. Next slide. Um, there is a big number of international students in Germany. Uh, at the moment, there are currently a bit less than 3 million students in Germany, and a bit less than 400,000 of them are foreign students. Some of them earn their um, uh, higher education qualification in Germany, but most of them have a foreign school leaving degree um, and came to Germany for the bachelor or master studies. Most of these foreign students come from the uh, top five countries, China, India, Syria, Austria, and Russia. But there are also, is also a big number of students from other countries, including Indonesia. Next slide. Um, the number of Indonesian students has been rising significantly and increasingly over the past um, 10 years, even more so since uh, 2000, we are currently at more than 5,100 Indonesian students enrolled in bachelor, master, or PhD studies in Germany. So there has been a steady increase in these numbers. And also this year, despite the pandemics, the number is quite good and has not um, decreased significantly. 
Next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's quite important to know a bit more about the German university tradition, what studying at a university in Germany means. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to mention that um, the, the vision of education in Germany goes back to the early 19th century and uh, can be summarized in the word of the unity and freedom of research and instruction. That basically means that university teachers are both researchers and instructors, and ideally their research has an influence on their teaching and the other way around. It does also mean that students especially on a master level, are also expected to engage in research, even though it may only be small research projects or to do scholarly work. So um, be innovative as researchers as well. There is a rich diversity of different institutions and in programs on a high academic level. One thing I would like to point out right from the beginning is that the German higher education landscape is more leveled than it may be in other countries. So there is not a top a 10 or a top five uh, that kind of soak up the bulk of all students while the other universities are considered uh, second class. It is much more level than in other countries. So there are about 400 institutions of higher education in Germany. The oldest one goes back to the 14th century and is located in Heidelberg. And these institutions combined offer more than 20,000 study courses in, uh, at the moment. Most of them are offered in German, but there is also a rising number of English taught programs. Currently we are at around 2,000 English taught programs, most of them on the master level. Next slide, please. As I said, there are different institutions of higher education. Um, the most well-known are probably the universities but there are also technical universities which are specialized in the technical subjects. Then there are the universities of applied sciences, Universitas Terapan in Indonesian. Um, they have closer ties to local industry and are less focused on research and more on applicability of knowledge. Then there are also the colleges of music, art and film, and there are private colleges and academies. Um, it may be noted that the private colleges and universities in Indonesia are quantitatively not as important as they are in Indonesia, where private institutions make up about 90% of all higher education institutions, while in Germany they make up about 10% of all institutions. So the overwhelming majority of higher education institutions in Germany is public. Next slide, please. Let's start with the universities. There are about 120 of them. Uh, the focus there is on methodical and theoretical knowledge, which does not mean that you don't have internships uh, at universities as well, but uh, it is, so to say, more scientific uh, than um, a focus on applied sciences. Uh, you may uh, choose uh, courses of your interest. Not all courses are prescribed. Final theses are very often research-based and universities offer a wide range of subjects, uh, typically including uh, well, all subjects from medicine to sports and um, including arts. Um, as in Indonesia, the typical degrees are bachelor's, master's and doctoral. There are, for some uh, study subjects, there are some all the traditional degrees are called state examination, um, as Germany consists of 16 federal states, and uh, the federal states have authority over the education system. There are slight differences among the federal states in Germany. So, for example, the pedagogical courses are organized a bit different. In some federal states, they are still they still have old degrees, while in some federal states they have. Uh, switched to bachelor and master degrees as well. Next slide, please. The universities of applied sciences um, are also high in number. There are 207 of them. They are highly praxis oriented. Often they're also in middle sized cities and so not only in the big cities. Um, they have close connection to the professional world, to the local industry. Often students work in fixed course groups and um, have 
uh, several internships during the course of the studies and praxis-oriented final theses. Um, typically, universities of applied sciences do not offer all study uh, subjects, but focus, for example, on engineering or on business administration, on social sciences and design. Um, Universities of Applied Sciences might be especially interesting to those who do not want to engage in an academic career, for example, who are more in, uh, interested in, uh, in a professional career, maybe also in Germany, um, and have a high, level, a high degree of, of exposure to the professional world and, and uh, practical experience. Um, the degrees offered by Universities of Applied Sciences are bachelors and masters, with very few exceptions, it is not possible to do a PhD at a University of Applied Sciences without a supervisor from a regular university. Next slide, please. For those of you who are interested in studying art, music or film, these subjects usually are not offered at university, but there are special colleges of art, music, and film for that, about 57. They're also very uh, highly praxis oriented and the admission differs from other university. Admission is usually based on a portfolio or an aptitude test. So you have to do a practical test or a rehearsal um, or you have to append in an artistic portfolio of your works. The next slide, please. Yeah, the, as I said, the degree programs that are offered in Germany are mostly bachelor and master programs. There is a bit of a difference uh, here compared to the Indonesian system. The bachelor is regularly three uh, years, but you can also have four year programs. And the master is one or two years, but the majority of master programs have a duration of two years. So one year master programs are still rather the exception. A PhD takes three to four years. Of course, it depends very much what sort of PhD program that is, whether you do a structured PhD program like in the English speaking countries where you actually like study again, or if you do an individual doctorate under the uh, supervision of a professor, uh, then you are more flexible and PhD studies in some cases may also take a bit more than three years. Next slide, please. Yeah, very important uh, question concerns the admission requirements. I guess that many in the audience here are interested in doing the bachelor studies in Germany. Um, I'll briefly touch on that later. Um, to know more about the admission requirements, you may go to our website, did.de. There is uh, special information about the admission requirements. Next slide, please. And briefly the saying for those of you who just come from the um, uh, uh, from a senior high school um, and want to do the first studies like take a bachelor degree in Germany, um, whether you have a direct access to the German university system depends on your high school leaving certificate. So if you have if you are from a national high school do not have a direct access to the German uh, university system, but you will have to qualify by passing a qualification assessment test. In German, it is called a Feststellungsprüfung. Typically, you do that by attending a preparatory course. It is called a Studienkolleg. Studienkollegs are located at universities. There are many of them all over Germany. Um, there are no tuition fees for the Studienkollegs as well. And those are one-year courses held in German. So you need German language skills to attend them um, with the subjects in, in German and in the courses that you want to study. So if you want to study engineering, for example, you will have course in technical subjects in physics and so on in German as a preparation. For those who have um, a high, sc high school leaving degree from an international school, like the International Baccalaureate or A-levels. Um, under certain conditions, you can have a direct access to the German university system. Um, however, you have to make sure that you also fulfill the language requirements. Um, most study programs at the bachelor level are still delivered in German. 
So the majority of English taught programs is on the master level. And even though with an international school living degree, you can study right away, you have to make sure that you meet the language requirements. If that is not the case, many universities offered actually um, sort of language preparation classes before you study. And there, is, there are also some courses, better programs offered in English. Usually, however, they are not for free, so you have to pay course fees for those. Next slide, please. Yeah, talking about German language skills, um, what are the requirements? How proficient should I be? If you want to enter a preparatory course, a student colleague depends a bit, but the minimum requirement is usually level B1, that is intermediary German. Um, for many student colleagues, it is, uh, it is also a bit higher B1 or B2. Um, there is a student colleague also in Jakarta, um, and there the requirement is B1. If you want to take your bachelor studies in German, then the level usually required is C1 or C2. C2 is only for uh, special subjects where you need to have excellent German language skills, such as uh, German studies, German philology, law or medicine. But usually level C1 is enough. And for master programs that are taught in German, it also depends a bit on the program. It can be from B2 to C1, and in very rare cases also C2 level. Next slide, please. Um, this is an overview of German language certificates. You can, uh, in Indonesia, so while you're in Indonesia, for example, you can take a test staff. There are several test centers in Indonesia, for example, at the University of Indonesia or at the Goethe Institute. That is a test that can be done in Indonesia and that is recognized by all German universities. Um, another test that you can do in Indonesia after the pandemic, I suppose, is uh, the Goethe Zertifikat C2. That is also accepted by universities. Um, and then there are also some uh, language certificates that are only offered in Germany, which means um, while you're, for example, at a Studium colleague, um, you prepare for the language classes and then take the exams there. Please check with the university, like where you want to apply, what language skills are required and what tests are accepted. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, next slide. If you do not yet master German or want to study uh, in an English taught program, for example, on a master level, there is a big variety of courses. Um, about 2,000 international degree programs, most of them, as I said, on the master's level, they are internationally recognized degrees, and um, the language of instruction is usually exclusively English. In some programs, maybe some courses are also delivered in German. For more information on the international programs, you may visit the website did.de international minus programs. Next slide, please. Um, now for the tricky question, what's how to find the right program? What's the right program for me? Um, there is a very, very comprehensive website. It's called My Guide. Um, and on My Guide, you can, it really helps you a lot to find a suitable study program for you because it starts with answering three simple questions um, concerning your interests, concerning your degrees or language skills. So this really helps a lot to find a suitable study program for you. I can really recommend that. Next slide. As for the application, there is not a universal way of applying, I'm afraid. Many universities um, work with a service provider called UniAssist which screens the documents necessary for application um, and then process the application process. Um, around 200 universities work with UniAssist, but not all of the universities, some of them also have a uh, system, so the application of the universities. For a handful of study programs, there is a central, uh, centrally regulated admissions policy 
uh, which is called Nomadus clausus, and that is for um, medicine, uh, for veterinary medicine, and for dentistry. And for those programs, um, you have to apply different through a different way through um, through hochschulstart.de. Um, so this is for these subjects. Um, it's very important to notice that these uh, subjects like medicine, veterinary medicine, um, uh, and dentistry are usually offered in German. So they, for these programs, you need to have very good German language skills. Next slide, please. Uh, very good news is that there are, uh, at most universities in most federal states in Germany, no tuition fees. Um, there are tuition fees incurred in the state of Baden-Württemberg. It makes up 1,500 euros. Um, but in the other federal states, studying does not have tuition fees. There is a semester contribution that can be 200 to 300 euros per semester, but that goes into administrative costs, but also in a semester ticket, in a reduced fees at the student canteen, and so on. Um, on the master level, some universities may offer courses that incur tuition fee, also on the bachelor level. So you have to check some programs come with tuition fees. Um, but the majority of courses does not have these fees. Next slide, please. The living expenses um, of a German student in the year 2016, on average, amounted to around 820 euros a month. As you can see, the biggest part of that is for rent. Um, it depends very much on where you live. So in the big cities, especially uh, Hamburg, Munich, Cologne, and increasingly also Berlin, that may not be enough. Uh, even living in a dormitory, you may use more money for rent. So this is more like, uh, it's an average, but a low average. Next slide, please. You are allowed to do part-time work in Germany to finance your studies. You're allowed to work uh, 120 full days a year or 240 half days a year, not only to finance your study, but maybe also to gain some work experience um, during the semester break, for example, or as part of your studies, doing internships, for example. Next slide. After your graduation, you're allowed to stay in Germany for up to 18 months, uh, looking for employment. During that time, you can accept any job. You can do any job that you like to do. After those 18 months, you can, if you have a, a job offer, you could apply for a blue card in Germany, um, and especially for specialists in, uh, in computer sciences, for example, but also for doctors or scientists. Um, it is easier to get a permanent um, uh, a work permission in Germany. Next slide. So to wrap it up, five good reasons to study in Germany. There is first-class service for international students. You have a very diverse range of study opportunities, not only engineering, which is very popular in Indonesia. There are also many other alternatives. Um, the universities are excellent in research and instruction. You have a very close link between theory and practice. You can do a lot of internships. Um, there are good opportunities for student jobs. And on an international level, the expenses for studying, including living costs and tuition fees, are rather low. Next slide, please. Yes, to get more information, I would like to... I welcome you to have a look at our website, did.id, where you find information about studying in Germany, research in Germany, but also uh, scholarships for, uh, for financing your studies. Next slide, please. This website, myguide.de, that would be the first choice to find more information about the right study program for you. Next slide. Uh, study minus in minus Germany is um, a very comprehensive website with general information about studying in Germany. Also, 
uh, portraits of universities and university cities, testimonials, um, information about visa application, about work in Germany, everything that you need to know. Next slide. Yes, and last but not least, um, I'll give you a brief overview of some scholarships that the DRT offers, not all of them, but some that might be interesting for you. Next slide, please. So there are scholarships for undergraduates, for graduates, for scientists, also for institutions and for alumni. Um, concerning scholarships for undergraduate studies, I have to say that there are no fully funded scholarships for bachelor studies. Um, available for application. There are only short time scholarships on the bachelor level. For example, study visits for groups of foreign students. So if you study at an Indonesian university and would like to visit some universities in Germany and stay up to two weeks uh, there, um, you or rather your university teacher can apply for funding um, so you can make a trip of your own to several universities and get in contact with German students and researchers and get a first impression of um, university life there. Next slide. Um, for those of you who study in Indonesia but do speak German on level B1, on an intermediary level, uh, you still have the chance until the 1st of December to apply for a scholarship for university summer courses in Germany. It's also for postgraduate students, for master students. Um, this includes um, a scholarship for a German language course of your choice in the summer in Germany. So that's in July or August, usually up to three weeks. Um, you can choose a course uh, of your own. Um, and apply for a scholarship if you already speak some German. Next slide. Next slide. Um, sometimes there are also people who would like to do postgraduate studies in Germany in architecture, music, or visual and performing arts. Um, there will also have a scholarship pr program. This year, most deadlines are already passed only for um, the program in fine art, design, and film. The deadline is still open until the 30th of November. Uh, for the other subjects, you might try again next year, usually in September and October. This is a fully funded scholarship, by the way, up to two years. All right, um, next slide, please. There is a scholarship program for postgraduate started uh, postgraduate studies, if you already have two years of professional experience after graduation, it's called the APOS program. This is for specific uh, study courses in development related subjects um, that can be technical subjects, but also in health, um, health or economy. Um, just check out the course list to find out more about that. For example, next slide. This program, International Health, now <laughs> during the pandemic might, be, might have become even more interesting. That's a program offered by the uh, Charité Berlin, uh, the biggest hospital in Europe. And um, that's a study program in health. Next slide. And there are also PhD, uh, scholarships for PhD programs. Um, the application deadline is mid-October each year. Um, yeah, I don't want to go into detail because the information is readily available on our website or you can contact us. Uh, we have about 10 minutes time now, so I would like to um, end the presentation now, point to our website again, um, have a look at the funding opportunities there, uh, and you may also contact us and make an appointment for consultation or ask your questions uh, on YouTube or also make an appointment during this week um, at our virtual booth. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you, Christian, for your presentation. Now we will begin the Q&A session. We have a lot of questions coming in, so I'll try to...
manage every question to be answered. All right, first question. Uh, what are the top five universities in Germany? Uh, that's uh, one of my favorite questions because I always say I don't know. Um, as I said, the German university system is not as hierarchical as other university programs. So I'm not a big fan of rankings, to be quite honest. Um, there are several rankings, of course, times higher education ranking, uh, for example. My advice to you would always be not to look for the best university in general, because there, there isn't the best university in general, but to look for universities that are specialized in what you want to study or that have a particularly high quality of education and a reputation in your field. So the answer might be very different if you want to study, I don't know, law or medicine or international health, because universities, especially on the master level, are also sometimes highly specialized. Um, so there is no general answer to that. Um, to see a more diversified ranking, I pointed our website. Um, there you find a ranking based on subjects. So you say, for example, I want to know about the quality of certain universities in the field of, I don't know, let's say design or architecture or medicine. And then you find several indicators, and you can choose your indicators. For example, quality or the research output or uh, internationalization, what's important for you. And then you get a list uh, with a certain indicators. So I'm afraid I cannot give you a, a general answer at the moment, um, but I would really ask you to use these more diversified and differentiated rankings. All right. Thank you for your answer. Um, next question. Do students need to wait until they receive the language certificate to apply or can they apply and submit the certificate later? That, that depends a bit on the, uh, on the studies. I suppose that is a question for bachelor studies, right? Um, you have to check that with your university when you have to submit the documents. Usually, the, uh, for most universities, the application deadline for the winter semester, which start, starts in October usually, is in the mid of July, and then you need to submit your documents. Sometimes universities will also make an exception, say, okay, you can submit your language certificates by September or at the latest um, at the moment when the semester starts. Um, but usually you have to submit your language certificate at the moment that the semester starts. So if it starts in October, you have to sub uh, submit it by that time. Good. it. All right, so third question. Will there be any delay for scholarship selection process due to COVID-19 pandemic situation? Uh, will there be information if the application gets rejected? That depends a bit on the scholarship program. Uh, generally, we try to continue all scholarship programs as before, which in the most cases has been the case this year. Um, only some short courses, like the language courses, could not take place this year, but the fully funded scholarships, for example, for PhD studies or master studies could take place. There may have been some delays but the scholarships were granted. Um, as for the selections, this next year in 2020, um, the application deadlines have not been delayed. So, no. Of course, we, we never know what the situation will be. So if the, um, if the situation, let, let, let's say, worsens, there may be delays. But if you have a scholarship and if you have um, a visa, then you can travel to Germany. That's no problem at the moment. All right. Um, we still have time to answer more questions, so um, I'll continue reading the question coming in. All right. Um, I took a master degree in 2010, and I'm preparing to take PhD. Is the gap of 10 years 
will be accepted by the AAD to continue to doctoral degree? Um, in this general way, I cannot really answer your question. The general rule is that the last degree for DAD scholarships must not be older than six years. Um, so this would mean a clear no, you're not eligible for a scholarship anymore. However, uh, in some cases, for example, if you have given birth to a child, for example, and therefore um, um, spend time raising your kid, that can be taken into consideration. Um, but like generally speaking, the rule is that six years after the last degree is like the, the maximum limit for DID scholarship. However, there are also other scholarships offered for studying in Germany. Um, we we'll also provide that information on our website where there is no such uh, limit. Thank you for your answer. This will be the last question. If the bachelor program is taught in English, do we need to have B1 or B2 certificate or IELTS uh, only will be sufficient? Well, that, that depends a bit. Let's say you have a um, high school living uh, certificate from an international school um, somewhere in Indonesia. So you have, for example, the IB diploma um, or the uh, A-levels. And if the bachelor program is fully taught in English, then you will not need German language skills. I mean, you always should check with the universities, but if you have an international uh, high school uh, degree, um, and a fully taught program in English, then no, you don't need any German language skills. However, I would also like to point out that English taught programs on the bachelor level, to my knowledge, do also always come with tuition fees. I mean, they may not be as high as in other countries, but uh, the combination studying for free in Germany and not speaking German is at the moment not possible on the bachelor level. Noted. All right. Um, thank you so much for answering the questions. Um, that's the end of our Q&A &A, Q &A session. Um, for those of you who want to connect with Christian or represented from DAAD, you can get their contacts from the information provided earlier. All right. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, everyone, uh, for tuning in. I will see you in the next session.